In December 1991, one family came to the police to report that someone named Marcelo Costa de Andrade was the cause of the death of his six-year-old son Ivan and the violation of his ten-year-old son named Altair de Abreu. Police had thought this was just one event, and they arrested him but Marcelo confessed to something that no one could ever imagine, in the annals of criminal history, there are names that send shivers down our spines, names that become synonymous with darkness and evil. One such name is, Marcelo Costa de Andrade, a Brazilian pedophile and serial killer, who confessed to the violation and death of 14 children in the Brazilian cities of Rio de Janeiro and Niteroi in 1991. His habit of drinking the blood of his victims earned him the nickname, O Vampiro de Niteroi, the Vampire of Niteroi. Marcelo Costa de Andrade, a man whose crimes were so heinous that they etched a terrifying mark on the pages of true crime. Today, we delve deep into the chilling tale of Marcelo Costa de Andrade, a serial killer who terrorized Brazil with a level of brutality that still haunts us today. Get ready, because this is a story you won't forget. Welcome back to Rotten Crimes, the place where we explore the darkest corners of criminal history. I'm Kevin, and today, we're delving into a bone-chilling tale that sends shivers down the spines of even the most hardened true crime enthusiasts. We're diving into the life and crimes of a man whose very name evokes fear and dread, Marcelo Costa de Andrade, Marcelo Costa de Andrade, a name that once haunted the streets of Brazil, a name that's synonymous with pure evil. In this episode, we're going to unravel the horrifying story of a serial killer whose brutality knew no bounds. We'll explore the crimes, the investigation, and the chilling legacy he left behind. But you should be warned, this story is not for the faint of heart. To truly understand the chilling tale of Marcelo Costa de Andrade, we must first explore his early life. The roots of darkness often run deep, and in Marcelo's case, his journey to becoming a notorious serial killer began long before his first heinous act. Marcelo Costa de Andrade was born on July 28, 1965, in the city of Angra dos Reis, Brazil. Andrade was raised by poor immigrants from the northeast of Brazil and spent most of his childhood in Rio de Janeiro. He was constantly abused and beaten by his father, who was also violent towards his mother, a housekeeper. Andrade was eventually sent to live with his grandparents, who were also abusive and violent. Years later, he traveled back to Rio de Janeiro and began to live with his abusive step-parents. To make the situation worse, Andrade was violated and almost killed by an older man, who tried to strangle him. He changed into then-dispatcher to a boarding school, where he became bullied. At the age of 14, Andrade was kicked out of the boarding school, and he in the end commenced painting as a call boy. During that time, Andrade attempted to commit suicide but failed. After escaping from the Funabem, a jail for juvenile delinquents, he met with some other gay guy and commenced to stay with him, however endured his prostitution. He eventually left his partner and returned to live with his family, leaving prostitution to work as a pamphleteer. Andrade frequented church and was told by a preacher that children go to heaven when they die. As a result, this sparked an interest in killing children, as he believed that killing adults was wrong because he would be sending them to hell. According to his mother, Andrade had a strange habit of listening to an audio recording of his younger brother crying. Engra dos Reis, a picturesque coastal town known for its natural beauty, might seem like an unlikely place for the birth of a serial killer. Yet, it was here that the seeds of darkness took root in Marcelo's psyche. The calm facade of his hometown would soon be shattered by the sinister events that unfolded, Andrade's first victim, an unnamed boy, was strangled with his t-shirt, his teeth pulled out and his shorts taken as a trophy. Andrade then murdered many other children, including Adia dos Santos. Andrade met Santos at the bus stop and asked her to come to her house because her aunt would give her money. However, he took Santos to an abandoned soccer field, where she raped and strangled her to death. After that, he went to his house and persuaded his mother to give him the machete. He then returned to the scene and used it to decapitate the corpse. Over a period of nine months, Andrade brutally violated and strangled 14 boys aged 6 to 13. 
Poor street children he'd drawn to deserted areas had been his victims of choice. He practiced necrophilia, decapitated one of them, crushed the head of another one, and, on two occasions, drank their blood, the last known victims were Ivan and El Tire de Medeiros. Andrade promises to give them the money and his brothers follow him to the beach, where Andrade attempts to kiss Ivan while he sleeps, but El Tire intervenes. In response, Andrade slammed El Tire's head against a rock and forced El Tire to watch his brother being violated and strangled. Shocked, El Tire agrees to do whatever Andrade says. Andrade then requested El Tire to stay with him and the boy agreed to spend the night time with him inside the bushes. The subsequent day, the terrified teenager controlled to break out and went to the police. Because of the trauma he had suffered at the hands of Andrade, Altair subsequently became very ill and died, police found the machete that Andrade used to dismember Santos' body, he eventually confessed to violating and murdering other children. It's important to note that Brazil's legal system and sentencing practices may differ from those in other countries, and this sentence might seem comparatively short in 1991, Marcelo Costa de Andrade was convicted and sentenced to a total of 21 years in prison given the gravity of his crimes. The legacy of Marcelo Costa de Andrade continues to cast a long shadow, a reminder of the chilling capacity for evil that resides within some individuals and the indelible impact their actions have on the lives of others, as we conclude our journey into the haunting story of Marcelo Costa de Andrade we're left with more questions than answers. His life and crime serve as a grim reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human psyche. The impact of his actions is a stark testament to the lasting scars left on the lives of his victims and their families, we must remember that true crime isn't just about the perpetrators, it's also about survivors' resilience and law enforcement's determination. It's about the communities that come together in the face of fear and the hope for justice and healing, if you found this video thought-provoking or informative, please consider sharing it with others who share your interest in understanding the darkest corners of human behavior. Remember to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode that delves deep into the world of true crime. Stay tuned for more compelling stories from the world of crime, as we continue our exploration into the minds of criminals and the pursuit of justice. Thank you for joining us today, and as always, be kind, and compassionate, and never forget that our shared humanity unites us in the face of even the darkest tales, I'm Kevin, and this has been Rotten Crimes. Until next time, take care and stay curious.